name's Steve. I'm a former maths teacher, still a maths advocate, and we're about to have a go at the Junior Maths Challenge from 2018. It was set in April 2018, back when you could see people, um, and we're going to do the best we can. The Junior Maths Challenge, for those of you who don't know, is uh, aimed at the lower end of secondary school students, so it's usually a seven year eight pupils, um, and for them it's tough. Uh, so if you are a year 7 or year 8 pupil, about to have a go at one of these. I'm going to give you some tips as I go through, I'm going to give you some strategies, think about how I solve the problems. But most importantly, unless you're like um, a prodigy, you should just be aiming for the first 15 questions. Um, the way it works is um, they're elegant questions and sometimes you'll be able to solve them. But if you uh, don't know a quick way of doing it, it will take you a lot of time. Or some questions you might not know, the maths you need to solve it or... You might not spot the quick way or the elegant way or something like that. So don't worry if you don't finish. It's more about kind of just trying new ways of seeing maths, math problems. These aren't the sort of questions you see on general maths tests. They're just different way of thinking about maths, much more abstract or much more about trying, here's a problem, what sort of math, math techniques do you have to solve it? Um, and the way it's scored is you can see a 0.7 there. Um, Every question is worth five marks up to question 15 and for the first 15 questions you don't lose any marks if you get them wrong. They're all multiple choice. So um, have, a, have a go. At the end of the paper go back and guess but don't guess any after that because they're very good at giving you good wrong answers. Um, questions 16 to 25 they're tougher questions. Uh, they're worth six marks each and if you get questions 16 to 20 wrong you lose a mark. If you get questions 21 to 25 you lose two marks. So they're much more um, punishment if you get those wrong so don't guess at those again if you're especially if you're in year seven you should just concentrate on the first 15 try and do as many of the first 15 as you can take your time come back to the easier ones that you couldn't do first time around um, and finally you're doing this because you, you're probably good at maths and you're good at maths because you like it or you like it because you're good at it or something like that so enjoy it if you're an adult doing this at a later date or anyone else want to have a go at this in the link to the youtube description at the bottom there's a link to my Twitch, please feel free to follow me, follow me on YouTube, but also there's a link to the actual paper itself, so you can have a go at the paper, um, pause this video, have a go at it, come back to it, watch me go through it, and at the very end of my video I will mark it as well. So I haven't seen this before, I might have seen the types of questions before, but I've not done this paper before, so I'm going to give it my best shot. And we're just going to go through and we're going to try and uh, do as well as we can. We're going to have 60 minutes, so I'm going to time 60 minutes, see how well I do. I should finish before 60 minutes, um, but I might make a slip or two, so I might not get full mark. So let's give this a go. All right, question number one. What is the value of 222 plus 22 in brackets all divided by 2? So that's going to be 244 divided by 2 which is you can half each digit, so you're going to get 122. Um, so the way I do these is I work out what I think the answer is and then look to see if it's there. So effectively in my head, I'm not looking at these at all, unless the question says which answer is wrong or something, or which answer doesn't work or something like that, where you have to look at all five. I generally won't look at the answers until I've got um, what I think the answer will be. A train carriage has 80 seats. On my journey, I noticed that all the seats in my carriage were taken and seven people were standing. A van bring nine people left the carriage, 28 people entered, and all seats were taken. How many people now had no seat? Okay, so there were 87 people. There's the 80 people sat down and seven were standing. Nine people left and 28 people entered. So we're going to subtract nine and we're going to add 28. Uh, so subtract nine gets you 78. Add 28 gets you 86, 106. And then all seats were still taken, so there was 80 of these 106 seats still taken, which means there's the remaining 26, so effectively you're taking off 80, the remaining 26 were all stood up. Change to blue pen, I do not know why. The diagram shows an equilateral triangle, a square, and one diagonal of the square. What is the value of x? So the equilateral triangle, let's get, we're just going to split this angle into two bits. Equilateral triangle means that these are all 60, so all angles in the equilateral triangle are 60. And the diagonals of a square, because it's a square, not a rectangle, the diagonal will cut the angle in half. So this little bit here will be 45 degrees of the 90. So in total, you've got 45 degrees, half a right angle here, 60 degrees for the equilateral triangle here, you've got a 105 degrees total. 
The perimeter of a regular decagon P is 8 times the perimeter of a regular octagon Q. For each each edge of the regular octagon Q is 10 centimetres long. How long is each of the regular decagon P? Well, the perimeter of an octagon will be 8 times 10 centimetres, which would be 80. Uh, the perimeter of the regular decagon is 8 times the perimeter of the octagon, so 80 times 8 gives you the perimeter of the decagon, so 640. And the decagon, as dec means 10, has 10 sides, so 640 divided by 10 is 64, which is one of our options. Um, they don't need to be regular in this. Oh, they sort of do, yeah. They do need to be regular. Regular just means all the sides and all the angles are the same, but yeah, they do need to be regular because you need to know all the sides are 64 equally. My train left Southampton at 6.15. And arrived at Birmingham at 8.48 later that morning, so it's on the same day. How many minutes did the journey take? So, 6.15 is 45 minutes to 7, is 60 minutes to 8, is 48 minutes to 8.48. So in total, you've got 45 and 60 and 48, and add these together, so 3 carry 1, carry 1. 153 minutes. I would always be careful with time because um, the, one of the biggest mistakes I see when I used to teach is that even the cleverest pupils assumed that this is 15 out of 100 because it's a feel, it looks a bit like a decimal. So with time I would always I would always be very careful when you're trying to do subtraction and addition with time. I would, I would break it down into bits um, otherwise you start to go wrong. So if you, because if you see things like 0.3 of an hour, that is not 30 minutes. And there are there in like 0.3 of an hour is 18 minutes, and 0.5 of an hour is 30 minutes. So you get you get so you get slightly weird weird things when you deal with decimals, especially in fractions of time. So be careful. The diagram shows a partially completed magic square. So uh, it tells you what magic square is in a sec, in which all rows, all columns, and both main diagonals have the same total. What is the value of x plus y? Hmm. Well, usually for memory, the magic, the total of the magic square is usually three times the middle number. So if that, I'm just going to see if we can work that out a different way. But uh, oh yeah. Um, Yeah, usually a magic square is three times the middle number. Twenty-one. I'm not sure you could work this out without knowing that fact. Let's have a think. So if the magic square is twenty-one, x is ten. And this would be eleven. Eleven plus seven is eighteen. Y would be three. So I think it's thirteen. Um, seven plus five is twelve. So that's nine. Four plus 9 is 13, so that is 8. 8 plus 10 plus 3, so that's 3, and that's 10. So that works. Both diagonals work. 4, 7, 10. 6, 7, 8. Hmm. I wonder if you can work that out without knowing that fact I knew, where the 3 times the middle value. I mean, you might not be, you might be able to do it in a way where you don't work out what x and y are separately, but you know what they are together. Maybe, maybe not. How many integers are greater than 20 plus 8 and also less than 20 times 8? Well, 20 times 8 is 360. 360. And 20 plus 8 is 38. So how many integers are bigger than this and also less than this? So if we take... 360, take 38. We've got to be careful here. 
they are 322 apart. So to get from here to here, you have to add 1, 322 times. But you've got to be very careful because the last time you add 1 is the 322nd time. But So the numbers in between these two, although they're 322 apart, there are 321 numbers between them. If you think about that, it's a bit like... It's a bit... You've got to be careful. So like... If there's a street, to go from house 10 to house 20, how many houses is that? That's 11 houses. The numbers are 10 apart, but because you're including those houses, they're 11 apart. If you didn't, how many houses between 10 and 20, we're not including them, there's 9. So when you're trying to count the numbers, you've got to be careful, because how many numbers are there between these two? You're not including either of them, so there's actually going to be one less when you take them away. If you're including both of them, there'd be one more. Um, so just be careful when you're doing things like that. Jill or Gill, probably Jill, scored a goal halfway through the second part of a teachers versus pupils netball match. At that point, what fraction of the whole match is remaining to be played? Now, halfway through the second quarter, so you've got the first quarter, the second quarter, the third quarter, the fourth quarter, split into quarters. Halfway, half a quarter is an eighth. So this is one eighth. But this is two eighths, so this is three eighths of the match have gone up to the point where she scored. There's Jill's goal. Halfway through the second quarter, so one eighth, two eighths, three eighths, and that means there's five eighths to go. You've got two eighths, four eighths, and eighth is five eighths. The approximate cost of restoring the Flying Scotsman was four million pounds. This is about 500 times the cost of building a steam engine, steam engine in 1923. I've seen the Flying Scotsman. I think when I was a kid it was at the National Railway Museum. I'm not sure if it's still there. So roughly what did the engine cost to build? So we're going to do 4 million. I'm going to change this into full digits. And we're going to divide by 500. Which is the same. You can cancel out... From zero, as you can say, it's 40,000 divided by 5. Well, there's 8 fives in 40, so there's 8, 5 8,000 to make 40,000, so it must be 8,000. Adding four of the five fractions, a half, a third, a sixth, a ninth, and an eighteenth, gives a total of one. Which of the fraction is not used? Well, these three add up to one. Because if you think about these all the six, that's three sixths, two sixths, and a six. So they add up to one. So it's going to be one of those three. And it's going to be whichever one of these three is the same as these two added together. So one ninth plus one eighteenth will replace one of these three. I think it's a sixth probably. Uh, one ninth is two eighteenths is three eighteenths is a sixth. Oops, is a sixth. So I know that these three add up to one, but because this is the same as these two, so one half, one third, plus these two, which is the same as a six, must add up to one as well, so we don't use a six. If you had time at the end of your paper, you can check that a half plus a third plus a ninth plus an eighteenth gets you, um, gets you it. So let's just check that now while we're at it. So uh, if we're adding these together, we can change them on to eighteen. So that's going to be nine eighteenths is a half. A third will be six eighteenths, a ninth is two eighteenths, and one eighteenth. So nine, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. So those added together gets you eighteen eighteenths. How many digits are there in the correct answer to the calculation? One, two, three. So 123 billion, 123 million, so on, so on, so on, so on. So basically, you're going to get a one, one. One, one. So this, just to be clear, that's a billion. You've got 123 billion. That's a million. You've got 123 million. That's a thousand. You've got 123,000, and that is units. You've got 123 units. So if you multiply this number by 123, you get back to this one. So how many digits are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten.
The diagram shows a quadrilateral PQRS in which PQ and QR have the same length. That's already labelled. Also, PR bisect, that means cut in half, equal halves, SPQ. The, ra the ratio of SPR to PRS is 2 to 3, and PSR is 110. How at large is angle PQR? So bisect means just to cut into two equal pit bits. If you were to dissect something, that would just mean cut into bits. So you would dissect a frog or something in science. That means to cut into bits. Bisect means cut into two equal bits. Just a slightly more uh, accurate way of doing it. So SPR, SPR to PRS. Uh, so this one is 2 to PRS is 3. So whatever this is, this is three of them, and then this is two of them. So let's call this 2x, let's call this 2x, which means that's 3x, and because this bottom triangle is isosceles, that's also 2x, so whatever angle this is, it's 2x, or x is just some angle, and these are the same. And there you go, so this angle here is 180 minus 4x. How large is angle PQR? So if we can work out where X is, we've got all these angles in terms of X, because these two are the same, uh, these two are the same, because of isosceles triangles. This is 180 minus these two added together, and this angle for every two of these is three of these. So we've labelled all the angles. We know that they all add up to 180, so we can say 110 plus 180 minus 4X plus a total of 9x is 360. So this is going to get you 290 plus 5x is 360. So 5x is 70, x is 14. And the question is how large is angle PQR? So PQR is 180 minus 414. So it's 180. Minus 4 times 14 is 180. 4 14 is 56. So it's 180 take 56 is 124. Is this one here? The diagram shows a shape made from four 3 by 3 by 3 wooden cubes joined by the edges. So it looks like these two are kind of hovering on nothing. They're joined by the edges, which means there's glue on this edge here that you can't quite see, and this edge here, and then it's hovering on nothing, and then the back one will be the same. So it's sort of um, symmetrical, rotational kind of... Be careful. What in centimetres squared is the surface area of the whole shape? Well, none of the faces are covered up. So I think this is just a visualisation problem. None of the faces are covered up, which means each cube will have a surface area of six lots of each face. So each face is going to have a surface area of nine centimetres squared. You're going to have four cubes with six faces. You can see all six faces of nine centimetres squared. It's going to be 24 times nine, which is going to be 180, 216. 1 of our options. Billy has three times as many llamas as lambs. Billy has twice as many llamas as lambs. They have 17 animals in total. How many animals are llamas? So Billy needs to have a multiple of four, because for every lamb he has, he has three llamas. So effectively, Billy's, Billy's got a ratio of three to one, and Millie's got a ratio of two to one, which means Millie needs to have a multiple of three. So what we're looking for is a multiple of four plus a multiple of three to equal 17. 
So you could have 16 plus 1, that doesn't work. 12 plus 5, that doesn't work. I'm doing multiples of 4 and seeing what you need to get 17. You can have 8 plus 9, that does work. And you can have 4 plus uh, 13, that doesn't work. And in theory, I assume you can't have 0. So we think that if Billy has 8 and Millie has 9, that would work because Billy needs to have a multiple of four because he's got three time three 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 lots versus one lot and Millie has two lots versus one lot. So if Billy has eight animals, he will have six llamas and two lambs. And if Millie has nine animals, she will have six llama, six lambs and three llamas. That works, isn't it? They have 17 lambs in total. How many lambs are llamas? So 2 plus 3 is 5. They have 5 llamas. Beatrix plays copies of the L shape shown on a 4x4 board so that each L shape covers exactly 3 cells of the board. She's allowed to turn around or turn over an L shape. What is the largest number of L shapes you can place on the board without overlaps? You could do 1 in each corner. So you see four in the middle, and one like that. So she can do five, she can fill 15 squares maximum. There's no way she can get another one in, and we've shown that we can do five. And we've also shown because five lots of three is 15, there's only 16 squares, she can't fit another one in. So we can't get any, we can do five, and we can't get any more than five, so it must be five. Right, so we've done the first 15 questions. We've kind of sped through them a bit. Uh, we now get onto the ones where we lose marks if we get them wrong. So if you are doing this uh, properly, you shouldn't be guessing from this point. So, so if, I, if I get to a point where I can't get an answer, unless I'm sure I've narrowed it down to like a 50-50 where it's worth guessing, I'm probably not going to bother. How many pairs of digits P and Q are there so that the five-digit integer P... 869Q is a multiple of 15. So this is one of my best areas in maths. So for it to be a multiple of 15, it needs to be a multiple of both 5 and 3. And for it to be a multiple of 5, you need P, uh, Q to be 0 or 5. And for it to be a multiple of 3, you need the sum of the digits to equal a multiple of 3 itself. So we're going to try two things. We're going to split it up into two bits. We're going to say that Q is 0 or Q is 5 and work out how many other digits will make this work. Because we know that Q has to be 0 or 5, otherwise it can't be a multiple of 5 which means it can't be multiple of 15. So we're going to look at P8690 and P8695. And we know that the sum of the digits... Hi, civilian. <laughs> Welcome back. Um, we know that the sum of the digits, including P, has to be a multiple of 3. So 8 plus 6 is 14, plus 9 is 23. So the sum so far is 23. So if P is 1, you get 24. P is 4, you get 27. P is 7, you get 30. And the next multiple 3 will be 33, which means P has to be 10. And it can't be 10 because it has to be a single digit. So you've got, when Q is 0, you've got three options. You've got 0 and 1, 0 and 4, 0 and 7. And a similar logic here, same again, 8 plus 6 plus 9 plus 5 is 28 plus P. And this has to be a multiple of 3. So P could be 2. P could be 5, because that gets you 33. P could be 8, that gets you 36. And the next one would be 39. P can't be 11. So I think the pairs are 0, 1, 0, 4, 0, 7, the other way around. Get the idea. So one not four not seven not, and also two five 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 eight five. So I think there's six pairs. Yeah, 
The areas of two rectangles in the diagram are 25 centimetres squared and 13 centimetres squared is indicated. What is the value of x? So we know that this, we know that this area here is 12. Four lots of three is 12, which means the area of this is the same as the area of this, and the height's the same, which means x also has to be 4. Yeah, so um, I'm recording this for YouTube, but I thought I'd also stream it as well in case people want to watch me do it live, so to know I'm doing it live. This is, um, in the UK we have these math challenges, and there are three levels of difficulty. This is the junior one, this is aimed at quite young children, um, and this is now getting to the point where they would they would be struggling quite hard on these questions. Um, but it's aimed for like the best of the best mathematicians, and most schools have a go at it, and they send you know, the, like some of the top set kids doing it. Um, I'm having a go at another one later in the week on Thursday, and then another one on Saturday, but I'm going to do the intermediate and then the senior one. Yeah, they're, they're tough. I mean, if you have a look at the, if you have a look, if we go back to the start civilian, uh, you can see that they start off quite easy, that that one you could do, and just a bit of numeracy, what's the missing angle in this shape, given a square and a, 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 a equilateral triangle. Um, but they get tough now. They get tough. Just going to re-explain this one. So the way I did it is this gap here, we know is 3 high and 4 wide, so this gap's got an area of 12, which means this rectangle here, these two added together, is the same as this, and they share the same height, which means they must also then have the same length. So it really doesn't look like it's four, does it? The usual guess of this sort of question would be five, actually, because this is a multiple of five. But... Yeah, uh, it's because I've seen this question before. <laughs> Uh, between them, the two five-digit integers, M and N, contain all ten digits from 0 to 9. What is the least possible difference between M and N? So we're looking to make two five-digit numbers with M and N using all the digits so that the difference between them is as small as it can be. So what you're going to need is you're going to need the first digit to be one apart. So for example, seven and eight. And then you're gonna need, this is gonna be 70,000 and something. So this one, you're gonna need to make these four digits as high as you can. And then this is gonna be 80,000, you're gonna make these four digits as low as you can. So my initial guess is actually, weirdly, is to start with four and five, because they're in the middle. And then to make, the fifth, the, the, dig, the five-digit number starting with a five as low as possible. You need the fewest amount of thousands, and to make this as high as possible, you need the most amount of thousands. So you, basically, to make these close, you need these to be one apart, and then you need the thousands to be as close as you can. And then of the remaining digits, the next ones are eight, seven, six. So I think you can't get any closer than this. So this is 123 away from 50,000, and this is 124 away. So 124 away, 123 away, so in total it's 247 away. So I think it's that one. I don't, I mean, there's, no way, I, there's no way I can get any closer, is there? Yeah, I can't get any closer. So if this was something like 230 or something, I would I would just double check. But that I can't. I, there's no way I can get any closer than that. For sure. Which one of these could be folded to make a cube? Oh dear, this is going to be a bit tough to explain. I think. So, so if you imagine your cube. So I don't know which one it is, but if you imagine your cube, 
and so on. You've got some invisible bits behind. Because there's four in a line here, that's going to be the front face, the top face, the back face, and the bottom face. They're going to wrap around. So what you're looking for is the two side faces to be completed by two of these half triangles. And this is just going to be a visualization technique. So if you bend these together and these line up, do these possibly make a, tri a, a face together? Well, these are different. So look, look. I'm just, while I'm just looking, he's looking at these two and these two. Do either of those work? If you're thinking, if you've got your cube, so if you've got your cube, so it's yeah. Because I've also got. I've also got a pair here and a pair here going the opposite way. So if I can work out which of these make a square. Yeah, I'm trying to, uh, someone in my chat is giving me their best guess. So if I'm just looking at the top, so looking at the top, if you think about these, when they're folded up, you need the, them to line up like that. And then when you bend this back out, and when you bend this one back out, they're going to be facing the other way. They're going to go like that and like that. So it's going to be C or E based on folding them up when they're next to each other. So when they're next to each other, you want them to be the opposite way around. So it can't be A because they don't work and it can't be D. And now what you've got to do is you've got to work out what happens when they're two apart. So So my guess, my guess is that this isn't going to work because if this worked, then this would work and then it would be this one. But you'll also know that if this works, this works. So it would also be E. So my guess is it's going to be C, but let's see if we can do that again. Again, if you, if you think about your face that's been made up. When you bend it back out, so if you want to bend this one back out, it's going to be like that. And then when you want to bend this one back out, when they're, they're going to be opposite each other. So when you want to bend this one back out, they're going to, it's going to be, and they're going to be the same way round. So you can see that if you're going clockwise, that's the same way, that's the same way, and that's the same way as that one. So if you're going clockwise round, this, when you fold it and unwrap it round, it's going to be the same as this. It's going to be C. And hopefully I've tried to explain that. It's very hard to explain without something in front of you. But it's going to be C. Yeah. Hmm. The drawer contains 10 identical yellow socks, 8 identical blue socks, and 4 identical pink socks. Amrita picks socks from the drawer without looking. What's the smallest number of socks she must pick to be sure that she has two pairs of matching socks? Hey, BMW fan. Welcome. She has two pairs of matching socks, so she's got to guarantee it. So, obviously, she could pick four socks and have two pairs. That's not an option, so you want to guarantee it. So, I think it's going to be six. If you picked blue, yellow, and pink, if you pick one of each... Then whatever you pick next, you're going to get a pair. So let's say you pick a second blue. And then the next one you can pick to avoid getting a pair is another blue one. Because you've got one pair of blues. But again, this could be any colour. And then now there's no colour you can pick that doesn't get you a second pair. So I think it's six. So whatever the next one you pick, if you pick a blue, a yellow, or a pink, you're going to get another pair. So it's going to be six. Because you've got at least four pink socks, you can go pink, pink, pink. It would be different if there were only three pink socks in the jar. But because there's four pink socks in the jar, you can go four pinks and one of the other two. 
just watching a YouTube video. Welcome, yeah, this is the Junior Maths Challenge from 2018. Uh, this will be up on YouTube uh, tomorrow, so hope you enjoy them. I'm going to do the intermediate one on Thursday, and I know the actual the UK are doing intermediate ones um, this week, I believe, but I think they're online this week, so I, I don't think I'm going to have access to them because I don't teach anymore. So, but as soon as I can get a hold of it, I will do. I've got some friends in school who might be able to get me one. Okay, there are blank vowels in this short sentence. Which of the following options should replace blank to make the sentence in the box true? Okay, so there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. They have twelve. Two, three, four, it's probably 15, yeah, one, two, three. So what we're looking for is for 12 plus the bottom number to equal the word. So 12 plus 2 does not equal 12, 12 plus 3 does not equal 13, 12 plus 4 does not equal 14, 12 plus 3 equals 15, 12 plus 3 does not equal 16, so we think it's 15. Cheers. I don't mind you having a go, um, but try not, to, if you can do me a favour and not shout out the answers before I've had a go at it. If I get stuck, feel free to help me, that's fine. That's really good, actually. I'm not sure, well, I can't remember which one, which one you were watching, but I, there was one of them I did awfully at. So that's pretty good, that. Cheers, BMW fan. So you can shout out the answer if you agree with me or whatever, or when, I, when I've got to the point where I know what I'm doing. But just, uh, you know, obviously if you're shouting out the answer now before I've read the question, I don't think it's, uh, I'm, I'm probably just going to ignore the chat for a bit. In the triangles, P, Q, R, and S, T, U, angle R, P, Q is 2 times angle U, S, T. I'm going to have to draw these. So I'm going to draw, draw, and these are not going to be to scale at all. So there's a, there's a triangle, and then there's another triangle. So angle P, Q, R, and S, T, U. Angle R, P, Q, R, P, R, P, Q, let's call that X. Let's call that 2x. It's 2 times angle UST. That's x. Angle PRQ. PRQ. 2y. Is 2 times angle SUT. Y. And RPQ. Ah, uh, sorry, RQP. Is a fifth times angle UST. So, weirdly, I can actually say this is 180 minus x minus y, and this is a fifth of that. I don't know if that helps. So this is going to be a fifth of 180 minus x minus y. So just to keep it easy, I'm going to say that's 10, that's 10, that's 5, that's 5. So that'll be 5, that'll be 5, that'll be 5, and that'll be 5. Because now this divides by 5. So I know that the angles in this shape add up to 180. So we can say that 180 is the same as 10x plus 10y, plus a fifth of 180 is uh, 36, plus a fifth of 5x, a fifth of 5y. So this is going to be um, 144 is the same as 9x plus 9y. What's the, what I'm trying to work out? How large uh, angle UTS? Um, 
and 144 divides by 9 so we can say that uh, how many 9's in 144 is uh, 16 16 is x plus y is it 16? 9, 9 is 18. Yeah, nine, yeah, 16. So 16 is x plus y. And then using a similar trick here, you can say 180 equals... Yeah, this doesn't actually get you anything. What's the question asking? Is it the angle UT, UTS? Yeah, oh yeah, weirdly you can do this. Yeah, so 180... So basically, if you did the same trick with this triangle, you'd get 180 equals 180 because the x's, the 5x's and 5y's are cancelled out. However, if you just look at the triangle, the angle we're trying to find out, which is this one here, we can say 180 minus 5x minus 5y. That's the angle here, but we can say this is the same as 180 minus 5 lots of x plus y. And that's 180 minus, minus 5 times 16, because we know x plus y is 16. So 5 16s are 80, so you've got 180 minus 80 is 100. So we think it's 100. The intermediate maths challenge requires trigonometry knowledge, but I haven't done it in my school. So um, what I would suggest you do, yeah, it does actually, because you need, yeah, so there's, there's two, yeah, I'm not sure I can quickly teach you trigonometry, I'm afraid, but basically, if you hang around at the end, once I've finished recording my video, I will give you some quick tips for some trigonometry, if, you, if you've done any of it. But you'll need to know the trig ratios, you're also going to need to know exact values for certain angles, and then you're also going to need to know the sine rule and the cosine rule, and then the area of a triangle. <laughs> Corners of a triangle are always 180 degrees. It's added together, yeah. Sort of a flat triangle, anyway. You'll need to know... Yeah, but Tim, you'll also need to know exact values as well, won't you? And you'll need to know half A, B, sine C. Will you not, for the intermediate one? Anyway, that's in my chat uh, talking about trig. T Tim, this is a maths teacher, so he'll he'll be able to help you. Um, Ali wants to fill in the empty square, so the number in each square after the fourth from the le after the fourth from the left is the sum of the numbers in the four squares to its left. What number should Ali write in the final square? So we know that this plus this plus this plus this is one. So let's call it x and y. 2 plus x plus y plus nothing is 1. So you know x plus y is minus 1. To work out this one, it's x plus nothing plus y plus 1. But we know x plus y is negative 1, so this will be 0. To work out 8, 0 plus y plus 1 plus 0 is 8, so y must be 7. And 7 plus 1 plus 0 plus 8 is 16. So we think it's 16. We didn't need to work out what x was. x would have been uh, negative 8, I think. The shapes P and Q are formed from two and three identical rectangles, respectively. Oops. The perimeters are 58 and 85, respectively. What is the perimeter of one of the rectangles? So this has a perimeter of 58, and this has a perimeter of 85. So I think if we call the short side x and the long side y, I think we're just going to get a simultaneous equation. This length here is y take x. So we're going to get, from this, just this perimeter here, we're going to get x plus y. This length here is y take x, so plus y take x, plus an x, 
plus the bottom is a y, plus the side is an x, plus this side is a y, is 58. And that tidies up into 1, 2, 3, 4 y, plus an x, take an x, plus an x, plus 2 x, is 58. And then separately, we're going to do the same for this one. This side is a y taken x, and this side is a y taken x. Because you think about you taking this x off the whole y, and you're taking this x off the whole y. So we're going to get, for the second one, we're going to get, just going round again, I'm going to start here and go kind of clockwise round. So we're going to get a y plus an x plus a y plus a y take x plus another y take x plus an x plus a y, plus an x, plus a y, plus an x, and that would equal 85. And again, we can just tidy it up a bit. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 y's. We're going to have plus an x minus an x, minus an x plus an x, and plus 2 x's. So weirdly, actually, you can just take the, you can take this one away from this one. So you're going to get 2 y is uh, 85 take 58 is 27 and weirdly is that right 27 yeah weirdly we don't need to work out what y is because the perimeter of one of them is 2x plus 2y so if we just take away 2y from this we know 2y is 27 so we're going to take 27 off 58 and we're going to be left with 31. So it's going to be that. Because we know the perimeter of one of them is just two x's and two y's. We don't need to work individually what x and y are. We can just work out what two x and two y's are. So we're going to take two y off this four y to be left with two y's plus two x's. All right, now I saw this one at the start, so I've made a big diagram here. Because I think I'm going to need it. In a diagram, PQ... And QR are sides of a regular n-sided polygon. So that's this edge and this edge here. SPQ and SRQ are 80, so they've been labelled on. PTR is 70. And PT equals ST equals RT. What is the value of n? So... If this is also 80, the exterior angle will be 20, and the number of sides would be how many 20s in 360 is 18. However, if that was the case, why have they given you all this other stuff? In fact, weirdly, that's only going to be 80 when S is the centre of the polygon, which it might not be. So we don't know that. So why have they given us extra information here? <clears throat> can we say, can, do we know that these two are the same? Yeah, you're probably right. They've probably given you, I don't think they'll, I don't think they've given you extra information to trick you. I think they're going to trick you into assuming that's 80 when it isn't. So can we assume that... Because this is isosceles and this is isosceles, are they the same? Are S and R the same as S and P? I think they are, because I think if you, if you did that... Yeah, so if you did that you know that this length and this length are the same because it's in the polygon. So you know that these angles here are the same, which means the remaining angles here are the same, which means this is also isosceles. So I think we can say this is isosceles, these two are isosceles, because this angle and this angle, once you cut off this little bit, are the same, because this back one here is isosceles. So I think... If we know that, we can work out, we can definitely work out this angle. And these are congruent because they've got three sides the same. So 70 off 360 is 290. So these are 145 each. Which 
which means we can work out this little bit here because these two are the same so 145 off 360 sorry 180 is 35 so this is half of 35 or 17 and a half so that little bit there 17 and a half this bit here I'm just going to change color so just you're looking at this isosceles triangle here this bit here is going to be 180 minus 70 halved so it's going to be 100 and a half 100 and that's going to be 55 which means you can work out this angle because what we're trying to do is work out this angle if we can work out one angle in the exterior uh, polygon so 55 plus 17 and a half is uh, 72 and a half so this is going to be seven and a half and this is seven and a half so to work out this angle here we're going to do 180 minus 7.5 minus 7.5 so the same as 180 take 15 is 165 and if you have a polygon where the angle is 165 to work out how many sides it has because we know it's regular and they're all going to be 165 we know the exterior angles are all going to be 15 and how many 15s do you need to make a full circle how many 15s do you need to make 360 uh, 360 divided by 15 is the same as 720 divided by 30 so it's going to be 24 so we think yeah 24 is an option I'm much more confident with that the other way you could have done it is it's probably a bit of an easy way of doing it actually is work out that angle together which will be twice seven that'll be just 35 that angle and then you've got 35 plus 80 plus 80 plus that gets you 360 that might have been an easier way of doing it the question is how many sides has it got what's the value of n how many sides is the original polygon so I was I was focusing on just working that angle out because once I work out that angle I can work out the lot the initial reaction was that that was 80 which it wasn't because if that was 80 then the answer would be 18 not 24 so I think that's right anyway I'm gonna go back to the front and mark it we're gonna mark what we've done um, so we go back all the way to the start and remember if you're marking this yourself I will tell you at what point you start to lose marks so basically the first 15 will get you five points the next 10 will get you six but will lose your marks if you're wrong so we're gonna go I can find where my answers are so here's some answers is this the answer sheet yes this is the answer sheet so we're gonna go back to the start we're gonna get a green pen out and we're gonna mark what we've done so question one is C no, it's not that's the question paper question one there's the answers question one is C question two is D question three is A question four is E question 5 is A question 6 is D question 7 is B question 8 is D question 9 is C 10 is C 11 is D 12 is A 13 is D 14 is have I misread the question? So 14 is oh I misread the question. No, I'm not. So I did my method was right. 14 is E. I'll notice that this deed they've swapped the other the words around. So that was three and that was six. So what you're looking for is I oh, know it was right. I oh, know I did it right just at the end. I needed to add those two numbers together. I added those two. <laughs> yeah. I just added the wrong two numbers together at the end. That was stupid of me. So I've got one wrong. 15 is D. 16 is E. 17 is B. Just scroll down a bit. 
18 is B, 19 is C. That was difficult to explain. I hope my explanation was good enough there. 20 is B, 21 is D. That seems quite an easy question for 21. 22 is B, 23 is A, 24 is B, and 25 was D. So we got that right. So we're going to go back to the start. Another one where I didn't get full marks. <laughs> this happens quite a lot at the moment. It's probably because I'm talking at the same time. So let's uh, get ourselves a score. <laughs> yeah, so technically I'm not too bothered about what I got wrong there because my method was right. I just misread the answer at the end. So we got four, it was question 14 we got wrong. So of the first 15, we got 14, which is 70. Of the remaining 10, we got them all right, which is 60. And we don't lose any marks because the one we got wrong wasn't one of the later ones. So we're going to get 130 out of 135, which if you're going to get one wrong, that's the highest score you can get. So um, my method was right on the question I got wrong, so I'm not annoyed today um, too much. Um, because I didn't do any bad maths. Just need to read the question. Maybe the sort of thing I could check at the end. I'm not sure I would have spotted that if I checked it because I would have just assumed I was right. So anyway, that's the Junior Maths Challenge 2018. If you've liked what I've done, please uh, like and subscribe on YouTube if you're watching on YouTube, if you're watching on Twitch. Uh, come on, follow me on Twitch, like me on Twitch, subscribe on Twitch. All of that's free. If you want to have a go at any of the other ones, I'm going to do the... Uh, intermediate one on Thursday this week at 6pm uh, British Standard Time and I'm going to do the senior one at 6pm British Standard Time on Saturday um, but otherwise thanks for playing along I'm going to work back uh, through as many of these as I can get access to and uh, I will see you all soon see you later